Hey guys, Mrs. Talk Techie here, and I have a Google Classroom Basics, literally Google Classroom 101. It's going to be kind of like just setting up your classroom so that you're ready to start the new year. What I mean is we have our class made, we know how to access our class, we've uh, invited our students, and we've set up our Google Meets. We're going to do all of those things in this short, quick video. All right, guys, so I'm going to try my best to keep it as uh, clear, concise as possible. The very first thing we're doing is we are identifying the ways in which to access our Google Classroom. When you have your laptop or your desktop ready, here is the first way you can access it using those devices. You can go just like I am here, I'm on Google, my Chrome browser, and you have what you call, or what many call, the waffle, or their technical terms, which I don't find very technical, are the nine dots. So if you notice top right hand side, I have those nine dots. You can easily click on that. You just have to make sure that you're under the right account. So your school account and all of these are actually customizable, meaning you can drag them to where you want so that you have easier access. So here is my classroom. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Now you're going to notice that I have quite a bit of classrooms. I did clean them out, but I need to clean them out after summer. So I will be archiving some of these. Um, but I want to show you how easy it is to access your Google Classroom. So that's the first way. Let me show you a second way that you can access it. As long as you go to your Chrome browser, you can actually type classroom.google.com and that'll take you directly there. Now notice, in my case, it looks different. Why? Because I'm not in the right account. So I always have to make sure that I go to my right account. So clicking on my little profile will take me to the right account. So there you have it. Those are the two ways that you can access them. Now I want to give you a little tip and trick. One thing I tried to tell myself was do not overdo it. But I think this is really important. So let's say, you know, you're going to be accessing your Google Classroom every day as we do remote learning. I think it's important to pin that tab so that as soon as you open your web browser, that tab is ready for you to go and you just click on it and it opens your Google Classroom just like this. Let me show you how easy it is. All you have to do is go to that tab, right click, and then you have that pin option. So all you, you click on that pin option and notice it went all the way to my left hand side and now it's my first tab. So when I close my browser and yes, I have a million tabs, but when I close my browser and I open it up again, that tab will stay ready for me to quickly access my Google Classroom. Let me show you really fast. So there you have it. I closed my Chrome browser and when I clicked on it again, it opened up and my tab that's always going to be there is this pin tab. Now, if you ever want to get rid of it, you can just right click and unpin that tab. All right. Now, the last way to access Google Classroom is on your mobile device. So if you have an Android phone, iOS, and maybe you have an iPad or a Kindle Fire, you can easily download the Google Classroom app and access it there. So that one's pretty simple. As long as you log in with your school account, then you'll be able to access your Google Classroom. So one thing I want to let you know is that the same way that you access your Google Classroom, your kiddos access it as well. So just keep that in mind, especially if you're trying to navigate a child through Google Classroom, you, the interface is basically the same. So keep those things in mind, guys. Uh, the next thing is it's time to create a class. So we would go up here to the plus button and we would create a class. If your kids are trying to join a class, then they would join the class. As an educator, you also have that option to join a class because you can join a colleague's class to see what they're doing, You, as a, especially as a co-teacher, or there's something I want to really go into right now, but I'm going to restrain myself and not do it, but I want to kind of just give you a heads up. If you are working with your colleagues and let's say 
one of your colleagues' strongest suit is doing math lessons and yours is reading lessons and you want to share those lessons, I'm coming up with a really quick tutorial on how easy it is to put those lessons together and utilize each other's lessons within our Google Classroom. So if you haven't already subscribed, I do highly recommend it. Mrs. Talk Techie, hit that notification bell so that every time I do upload new content, you'll get notified. So that's in the works. I hope you guys do get to watch it, all right? So keeping things simple, after we press on that plus button, we're going to create a class. And I don't want to get too in-depth with this. Just keep this in mind. How many classes are you teaching? Do you want to have a class for each subject, for each class period? All right, so let's say elementary. Elementary teachers teach multiple subjects. Do you want to have one Google class? And if so, you're going to have to create topics in which those topics are going to be your subjects. So you're going to create a topic that's math and then a topic for reading and science and social studies. That's one route. A second route is you create four classes, and this is your math class, your science class, your social studies, your reading class, but that means your child, your students will have to join those multiple classes. So there are uh, pros and cons to everything. I cannot tell you what is the best choice to make. The only thing I do highly recommend is to have those conversations with your administration and then come to an important decision that's really gonna make the best instructional impact for your students to enhance their teaching and learning, right? So just keep those things in mind. I teach middle school, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my name as B. Gonzalez, second period. Now, why am I putting my name if it's my Google Classroom? This is why, guys, if your administration is going to have access to your Google Classrooms to kind of take a look at what's going on, it'll make it a lot easier that for them to know this is Ms. B. Gonzalez's second period versus just a class that says second period. Anyways, I hope that makes sense. I don't want to get too much into depth with these things, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to troubleshoot issues before they happen. All right, guys? So you can choose to fill out the rest or not. It's totally and completely up to you. I'm going to create my class. So I just created my first class. What you have here is what they call a Google Classroom banner. This one right here. It's totally customizable. I'll show you really quick if you want to change it up. But once you have your class, you have the folder here. If I click on this folder, it's going to take me to my Google Drive. And that's where all the assignments, everything's going to live for this class. So I can click here and it's going to take me directly there. This one is going to take me to the grade book for this specific class. You also have these three little dots that you can choose to kind of move in around your classes and reorganize. You can edit it so if perhaps it was a different class period, you can change the, the title of it. You can make a copy of it or you can archive it. So when you're done with the academic school year, let's archive that class, which is what I'm going to do to my summer school classes. So now we're ready to enter our classroom. What I want you guys to know here in our classroom is that we have specific tabs. We have our stream. The stream acts as a like a kind of like a social media feed. You can easily change the settings on this feed. At this point, by default, kids can comment on your feed. You can comment. They can put posts on there. If you're interested in changing that up, I'm not going to get into it, but you can always go here to the gear and it'll allow you to make those changes. The classwork is where you assign work to your class here. That's all you're going to do. You can create assignments and questions. You can uh, create topics in which you organize your class work. And of course, you can always reorder the work. I'm not going to get into depth. Of course, if this is something you're interested in, I will be creating a second part to this video. This is just initial setup. People, this is where we want to go. When it comes to people, we can add co-teachers to our class. So here, 
I would click on the invite teacher and I would type in my teacher's email address. So if your administration is asking you to add them as co-teachers so that they can have access to your Google Classroom, this is where you'll do it. So you'll just add their email address there. Students, you can click on here and if you have a roster of your students' email addresses, you can copy and paste it here or you can add it one at a time. Now. What is the other way that your kids can access and join your Google Classroom? Let's take it back to our classroom header. So I'm going to go over here where my name and class period is at. And here it says class code. This is my classroom header. So I can click on these four, like the square right here. And that is the code that I can also issue out to my students so that they can join the class. Just like when we clicked on that plus button to create a class, they can click on that plus button and type in this code and now they're gonna be a student in your class. So if you're ever having to navigate with a child how to get added into their class, you can ask them just to access their Google Classroom, click the plus button and type in this code and they'll be automatically added into your Google Classroom. All right, guys, so this is your class code here. Now, the next thing is I want to show you the Google Meets, all right? So if you're going to be doing live instruction with your students, it's important that you have them access this link through the classroom banner, all right? The reason why I'm saying this is, and I don't want to confuse anyone, but there is a way to generate a classroom meet code through calendar, all right? And the reason why I do not recommend through calendar is because kids can always save that code and then log in on their own. What I do recommend is generating your meet, Google Meet link here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on generate meet link. And so I'm gonna click here, generate meet link. And it's working on it and I want it to be visible to students. So I'm gonna make sure that this toggle is on and click on the save button. The great thing about it is, even though it's gonna be accessible to them, in reality, the students, this is their view and they will have this accessible and they can actually click on it and be ready to join, but they will not have access to actually join until you've opened up that classroom. And the way to open up that Google Meets classroom is literally just clicking here and then all you have to do once it's ready is you join now and once you join now that means it's open and your kids can join as well so if you tell your parents and your kids we will be meeting every Tuesday at 11 make sure that you click on that Google meet in your Google classroom that's exactly what they're going to do and they're going to be waiting until you're in that classroom then they're going to be allowed to come in all right, guys, so very, very simple. So lastly, and it's gonna be very brief because we haven't really done classwork stuff, you have the grades option. So once you have all your kiddos here, you'll be able to see uh, their work submitted and the grades that they're receiving. So um, one last thing, if you do wanna edit your Google Classroom banner, you can select a theme or you can upload your own. If you've seen those awesome Google Classroom banners with the Bitmoji, especially those GIFs, if you don't know what I'm talking about, let me show you really quick. These right here, I hope you can see it. So my GIF right here is she's moving around and then the logo for our district is there as well. And so if you're interested in something like that, I will link my YouTube tutorial on how to do that in the description below. All right, guys. Last thing, I will be creating a YouTube tutorial exactly like this, same information, but for both parents and students, okay? So make sure that you grab that link in the description below. It will totally help and troubleshoot a lot of issues when it comes to kids joining your class. I'm gonna walk the parents and the students through how to access their Google Classroom and how to join, especially if you are giving them that class code, I will show them what to do. But if you have invited them through email, that class will automatically pop up 
And all they have to do is click on join. But I will walk them through all that. Now here's the extra part about it. I'm gonna do my best to do an additional video in Spanish. Now my Spanish isn't great, but I'm gonna try my best and I think that the parents and the students will get the gist. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you do enjoy it. Let me know what you think and always feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions or concerns. If you're interested in doing kind of like a part two simple, like how about assigning work to your kids let me know if i get some feedback as to you wanting that i will be more than happy to create that for you guys all right have a good one and we'll see you later don't forget to copy those links all right to share them out to your parents